ourselves. Done with Billy, Asha, with his family. When you get to the to South Africa. His family brought him to South Africa. Gandhi came first in 1908. Mm -hmm. And then later, um, his wife and two kids, they joined him. And I know that two of his sons were born in South Africa because Gandhi came to South Africa in 1893 mm -hmm. and then he left after the Anglo Boer War, which was 1902, and then he came back again. So he stayed here for plus minus 20 years. You see on this timeline, mm -hmm. 1908, he was 39. Mm -hmm. 1913, he joined the Satyagraha campaign. And then after they released him, he left South Africa in 1914. He was 46. So now you see that Mandela and Gandhi, they never met. Mm -hmm. So if your guide tells you that Gandhi and Mandela met, you they must ask did. for your refund. I like that. Okay. Gandhi, Gandhi and Mandela, Mandela. Yeah. they never met. Yeah, I mean, obviously, two different met. time, two different right. yes. timelines. Time he just adopted. He just adopted the. And the you see, when Gandhi left in 1914, Mandela was not born yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was born four years later. Mm -hmm. Gandhi was a member of the police, South African police at one time, or was he not? No, not a member of the police. He was assisting. Um, there's this way, like when people, you know, were hurt, so Gandhi was helping them, taking them with stretcher to the hospital. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was not a policeman. So why was he arrested? For what reason? For refusing to carry his passport in mm. 1908. And he was considered mm. a colored? Asian. Asian, okay. Asian. Okay. Asian. A but somebody, I, thought, I thought Asians were colored. Indian, I thought it was the same. Indian. No, no, no. no, no. He's from According Indian. to we'll break down apartheid. Our bit, so. All right. If you are like me, you are a kafir, which means a Negro. If you are a colored, it's a mixture of a black and a white person. You are light in complexion and you have curly hair. They were called um, boosmans. And then if you are an Indian, you were called Guli. So even myself, I was confused. What is a Guli? So according to the Indians, they were saying, you know, it's an insult, which means a porter. <laughs> so Gandhi was a step down from the whites, one step lower? Yeah. Just one step. Whites were on top. Mm -hmm. Indians, or Asian. Carlots, Chinese, and then Africans at the bottom. Is it the same today? <sighs> yes. Let, let <laughs> me say it's not 100% fixed. Why am I saying that today you go to Soweto, we still have blacks who lives in township. Right. You go to another township which is called um, Langlachte, you will find Kalats. You'll go to Lenagia, you'll find Indians. You come this side to the suburb, you'll find whites. So you'll only find few blacks who are staying this side depending on your pockets. Mm. So that legacy of separating people by color is still in existence just like it was yeah. before the 90s. Same it, thing. You know apartheid yeah. took more than 40 years. Okay. So personally, I understand that things cannot change just, just like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna take time. But you feel like we're moving yeah. in the right direction as a people? Yes, we are okay. because before you couldn't live in Soweto and attend school in one of the international schools. But now you can, depending, you know, how much money do you have. So now we have a brilliant minister. Now he's closing down all the schools that are saying we don't take black kids. If your kids can speak Africans, you won't accept him. He said, okay, you are like that. He's shutting down all those schools. Yeah, shut him down. What's his name, mom? Um, of education, Minister sort of education. Woo, his name then. I'm gonna think about him and then I'm it's gonna. It's okay. I'll think about somebody else. Got a question for you, yeah. Warren? Do we still have any? We still have any legacies of what she's talking about in the United States? Yeah, Come I mean, on. yeah, I mean, how bad is it? I'd say probably South Africa has moved further quicker than we mm -hmm. have in America. 
for the short period of time of where they came from to where they are. That's a good, good point. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. No question. It's no question. Because they have the modern society that can move quicker with the technology. Uh, like she's saying, more when she's saying, like, he wants to close the schools down, he can use the technology to see where these schools, he can go right to well, them. What's wrong with us? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I mean. It's just, it's just a different era. I mean, they, mm. they, they, to me, what I see is South Africa has fought so hard to get, and they have come at the right time to that prayerfully over, like she say, I mean, it's just been 25 years since apartheid. So well, in another 25 good. years, they should be, I hear about don't you. use America. Please don't do as America. As an example. Like, <laughs> please don't use America. No, don't use America you as an like example. We, we no. have achieved a lot, even if like it, it's not 100%. Right. Um, when you look at our history, you know, our uncles, brothers, they used to leave their own country running yeah. away because they were killed. Others, they were disappearing, which I cannot believe that a human being can just vanish. Yeah. So now, come 1990, Mandela was out in prison. 1994, we voted, we won the elections. Now parents were saying, our kids, they can come back now. And others, they were saying, now Mandela is out. We are fit, we are well trained, we can take up arms. But Mandela came with a brilliant strategy of saying, let us not pay revenge, let us not fight, let us work together and push the <coughs> country forward. And what he surprised me, uh, he called some of the people who were in National Party. National Party hated, you know, black parties. He called them and he gave them positions in parliament. And they were doing a very good job in taking care of our economy. You see, so I'm not sure if everyone was happy about his decision. Yeah, that's what I'm getting ready to ask you. Yeah, uh, and that. I'm <coughs> thinking that maybe somewhere, somehow he realized because later he introduced the Truth and Reconciliation. Because he could realize that these people are happy but inside they are not healed. Yeah. The only way is to call a perpetrator and a victim to sit together and reconcile. So to, to some others it worked, they came together, to others it didn't. Because others, did they get any punishment on those who you reconcile with? Is it any punishment? Others, others they were, you know, taken to prison, others they are still like the in Jewish prison. Like the Jewish people? Oh, okay, you say some have were who yeah, did? Yeah, yeah, okay. because I know that one of them... But the main perpetrators, kill. not so much. The problem was that <laughs> even if you receive a letter oh, yeah, that you were invited to come and testify, it was up to you whether you want to testify or not. You were not forced. Mm -hmm. But it was all about healing yourself as well. So oh. what percentage were the people who came for the reconciliation? There were commission? not many. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And see, that's what I'm... Not many of them, <laughs> right? Uh, that's, that's well, why couldn't they... The part I may be like, I think, I've, in my research, is to say on that particular note, mm -hmm. once, the, once Mandela took over government, then like now if you want to use the American model mm -hmm. is that yes we have subpoenas we say come and mm -hmm. to you know reconcile mm -hmm. if you do not then the legal system mm -hmm. will then take over and evaluate your crimes mm -hmm. and then you get punishment right. why wasn't that done that's what should have been done yeah that, exactly. that's the part yeah that. exactly but because only a few people they came forward and then others you know after hearing stories it was difficult, especially when someone was going to tell a story about how he bent, mm -hmm. you know, three young men. And then he spoke about, um, well, this one of the boys was in flames, you know, when his eyes burst, we were laughing, and then we say chairs. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't even show remorse, you know, on his face. No, so they yeah, took him I, straight I, to prison. I think, so. Still I think as blacks, yeah. we got. Well, see, I think that's too forgiving. We, we too, yeah. 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 You remember the, 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 yeah. the, the, yeah, the trial a few weeks we ago? We are too soft. Yeah. You know, I mean. Yeah. But when, when the brother goes up, got hugged and defended. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we have in America. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. really. But this yeah. is this, this is us as Africans, though. This is this is mm. our. We are. We we're are. Too, 
Mm. But it's part of our, as Africans, but we have to figure a middle ground. Yeah, we're, we're people with a soul. We, yeah. yeah. And, and we, we have forgiveness in our soul, but mm. others don't. But we need a middle ground because it's just too no much. But there's no response, though, from them. I mean, it's not going to ever be any response. response. They're we not do forgiving. Be, yeah, we we want to be friends with everybody. No, I mean, the, because the we're others. touched by our parents, our great grandparents. Right. It's a generational, yes. a historical thing for us. Yeah. Yeah. But I think that the, the, the Mandela Ma, I mean, it was the best. Only That was my only criti criticism. Yeah. That when the reconciliation come, mm -hmm. it's like in America, if you do not come, mm -hmm. then criminal yeah, yeah. you you yeah, know yeah. the criminal yeah. system takes over. Yeah, get you. I don't <laughs> think that happened here. I mean, those yeah. are the reasons why people always call Mandela soft. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, soft. it was set yeah. up that way so no, that it wasn't soft, man. Yeah. You know what? Sometimes you have to give. You have to you give eighty to get eighty, right? Oh, that's a good point too. You have to give eighty. You know that. You know questions. Youth organizations were saying. Um, we don't know what Mandela was discussing with Behind these people. The yeah. yeah, they they work they they work they worked them over. We I'll also say <laughs> that they had him for 27 years. You don't right. know it, you don't know what happened well, during you know, that 27 yeah, I mean, years. Was, I mean, he got out of prison. Mo his wife had stood beside him. Okay. He well, divorced his he divorced his wife. Mm. Right. Yeah. But you know, I, that. you know. But just and the, she to me she was a true leader yeah you know yeah. but just and like in america we a lot of our prisoners that we get we let out who've been uh, unjustly african africans mm -hmm. in america who've been unjustly 99 mm -hmm. percent of them come out and forgive they be like oh yeah. i'm healed <laughs> no we don't want to say i'm illegally kept in prison for 20 years yeah. we have that in us as african yeah. people we, we forgive we, yeah. we got to figure out something with that we don't need to it's change we blocks. can't be like them yeah. but we need a middle ground on this we certainly we do. can never be the killers they are. We can't do oh, it. Oh no! Yeah. Okay. It's not. It's not in us not to do to be like that. Yeah. So what is our we, middle we ground? We yeah, have to what, figure what out. No. Yeah, we'll I know um, we can't kill like they kill. We can't do that. No, but we don't need to kill. But some punishment needs to come forward. I also to keep repeating. And it's, well, keep it's repeating. repeating itself. Right. It's we actually, that it's keep yeah, it's still repeating. repeating itself. No matter yeah. where you are, that's in why the cops are African killing people. white, black people all yeah, the all time. In America, they're killing yeah. black children all the time. And all they say was, "I feel threatened." That's all they said. I felt threatened. There's a very interesting case that is happening now. In, in, in South in Africa? South Africa, okay. yes. There's a guy mm -hmm. by the name of Yaluz Wanus. He's not a South African, I think he's from Poland. Mm -hmm. Poland? Yes. He he's was white. hired. He's an Irishman, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. He was hired by someone mm -hmm. here in South Africa, mm -hmm. but you don't know who, mm -hmm. to come and kill Chris Ali. And Chris Hani, Chris oh, Chris Hani. Hani. yes, Hani. he was the, the member of the South African yeah, Communist Hani. Party. Okay, okay. Yeah. Very vocal. Okay. And I think they were checking him what time he leaves his house, you know, for jogging, and what time he comes back. Mm -hmm. So one Sunday, they shut him mm -hmm. outside his house, mm -hmm. and then they buried him. And then after I think few months or few weeks they've managed to arrest this guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he committed the crime mm -hmm. under apartheid regime. Mm. And he was waiting to be sentenced to death penalty. Mm -hmm. So he was saved by the new constitution mm. that was introduced by mm. Mandela and yeah. Yeah. other people. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Last month, he wrote a letter to the Justice Department saying that According to the South African law, mm -hmm. if you have spent 20 years or more than 20 years, you deserve a parole. When am I going home? Mm -hmm. So at first, they rejected his proposal mm -hmm. because they are saying, you don't want to say anything. You don't give us any information or any, any names. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stay mm -hmm. there. So yeah, you absolutely. wrote again. Absolutely. So I'm afraid that if he can find good lawyers, he might get, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, he might go home yeah. because you can see that he's still in prison and someone is taking good care of him. Wow. But we don't know so he's not even in isolation. But if they release him, know. then those same people who's taking care of him might bump him off. 
because he might talk. No, at that point he's free. He for yeah. 20 years, yeah, he's he still does. saying, I'm not saying anything. Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah. You know? That's what she's saying. He's not. Yeah, he's yeah. That's what they say. So, they would talk. let him out if he tell him, right. oh, yeah, okay, I got you. Yeah, the yeah. language yeah. So, that they have. Because they just, they're not they torturing him enough. No. no. We can do some military torture. Military torture to him. Remember here in South Africa, prisoners, they have rights. Right, they have rights. So you torture a prisoner, you yourself, you go to prison. doing that, yeah. And they have that in America, too, but they don't ever follow that. Right. But <laughs> they have the, on the paper they have that, yeah. but it doesn't. Yeah, but but no, I I think South Africa has come far in a shorter period because all this stuff has happened. You you lived under apartheid, right? Yes, yes. but I, I was young. You was young, yeah. But you didn't have to carry a pass, did you? No, actually, I didn't understand, you know, what was going on. But what I was told by my grandmother is that when I'm playing with other kids, the minute I see a police van, I must call my uncle. And then he will grab my hand and run and go to the house. So we used to have back rooms. We will go at the back. Mm -hmm. I will open the cold box. Mm -hmm. He will go inside. I will lock it and mm -hmm. sit on top. And then I will sing. Mm -hmm. You know, I did that up until I was 12 years, but I didn't know why. Mm -hmm. The way it was on the part apartheid okay. in the South in Jim Crow, right. they didn't care about the kids playing together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just play with the white boys all the time. Nobody cared. Yeah. You know, like six, seven, eight years old. Nobody right. cared. But once you reach a certain age, yeah. you can understand all, the yeah, system. Yeah, all that. Yeah, all that had to cease. Yeah, yeah. That had to a certain cease. age. Yeah, like, like, like a teenager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like puberty. Teenager, puberty. Oh, yeah, puberty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all that had to quit. But as long as you're a little kid like that, they couldn't yeah. care less. Yeah. Nobody cared. Nobody paid any attention to it. Yeah, yeah because from 12 years they were arresting kids. Sometimes yes, right. 10. You said in the yeah. laws. Mm -hmm. The laws. Like at the women's um, section. Um, kids, they were arrested from the, the age of you know, 11, 12, well, mm -hmm. during the uprising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Winnie was the one who fought for them. Right. She was always fighting you know, with the captains and that you need to release these kids because at night you don't sleep, they are always crying. It's cold in this place in winter. Yeah. So they were released. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, I thank you. you <sighs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, do you want to watch the Gandhi exhibition or we just go straight to the courts? Let's go straight, straight to, to the, the courts. courts. No. Yeah, yeah. We, no. Well, we got to go. <laughs> hey, come on, the hell with Gandhi. We are even scared to climb there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ladder. Yeah, yeah. 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 You kind of rough, brother. You kind of, people sacrifice a lot. Hey, they, they, took that, they took that statue down of Gandhi in Ghana. Yeah. You know, Dr. Obadeli oh, Kambo, Kambo did his thing, man, and, 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 and pointed it out. I saw that. Once he did that and he was explaining, I was like, Yo, man, why, why is this person? So I'm, I'm starting to think about this right here. Right. Well, when, 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 I when you also heard that in Pretoria, they yeah. took down one of the statues. Right. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's. Uh, Did you go to the museum? Oh, oh, Did you go to the museum? Oh, oh no. That in there, nice. you would think they were best buds. Everything in there, them together, as if they were best buds. Like they lived together. Yeah. Unbelievable. And yeah. Real, Real propaganda. So <laughs> Real propaganda. It's amazing in there. <laughs> You can tell who put some of the stuff together. <laughs> yeah, they put. You know, we can't do nothing by ourselves. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's kind of like the, else gotta have a hand in some kind of way. Yeah. Absolutely, it's kind of like the civil rights movement, uh, not civil rights museum in Atlanta. I went there. It was they got the gay stuff at the top floor, and and just pushing, just yeah, you know, kind of like you, you have one. You have the civil rights movements in the bottom, and the top is about. Um, World, you know, it's like a world movement of. So we have to define what that is. It's a world rights, right? Yeah, we have, yeah, world rights, yeah. Or universal rights, something like that. But it undermines what the civil rights movement was about, the way they have it presented. So a lot of times people can have things presented to psychologically get with us, mess with us. So, family, that was very, very educational. And that's what we're about. We're about educating and uplifting ourselves. Straight up, straight black empowerment all day, every day.